Hey guys and welcome to my YouTube channel. I am Amit and I hope you all are doing great. So today in this video we will discuss an Android interview question and as you all know this video is a part of the series Android interview questions and answers and for that you can find the playlist link in the description below. So for today the question is late in it versus lazy properties in Kotlin. And this is one of the most important question when it comes to Kotlin interview. So now let's discuss the answer. So basically both of these properties are used frequently in our Kotlin Android project. So that is why one of the most important question with respect to Kotlin interview. So first of all, let's discuss about the late init in Kotlin. So it is useful in a scenario where we do not want to initialize a variable at the time of the declaration and we want it to initialize at some later point in time. but we have to make sure that we initialize it before we use it. So one way to achieve this goal. So the goal is what? We will not initialize the variable at the time of declaration and we will initialize it at some later point in time. And for that we have to make sure that we initialize it before we use it. So to achieve this goal, one way that we can follow is that we can simply create a variable which is nullable. So, but this is not a good way to achieve it. And in Kotlin, we will always have a better way to achieve the same job, to achieve the same thing. So what if, if you do not want to make the variable nullable? So for that, the answer is late in it. So that is where the late in it comes into the picture. And now let's see our updated code. So this is our updated code. So whenever we use late in it, we will have to use where and we can notice that here we do not have the nullable variable. This mentor variable is non-nullable and this is what we wanted. So now whenever we want to use it, but before using it, we will have to initialize the mentor, very important. So the only thing that we have to make sure that before using the mentor variable, we will have to initialize it. Otherwise it will throw the exception like this. So you will get the error like this. Kotlin uninitialized property access exception late init property mentor has not been initialized. So this is what you will get if you do not initialize it and if you try to access it. So we just have to take care that before using it we must initialize it. That's it. And one more thing. In Kotlin we also have a way to check if the late init variable is initialized or not. So this is by using the is in slide so you so we can simply check like this this mentor dot is in slide right so this is how we can check whether it has been in slide or not so that is a different thing but we always have to make sure that we in slide it before using it so that is the only thing that we have to take care of while using the late init property so let's summarize everything about the late init property first thing is that it can only be used with the where keyword. It cannot be used with the val keyword, right? So very important, where will be there always. It cannot be used with the nullable. It can be only be used with the non-nullable variable. So we cannot use the let init with the nullable. Always it should be non-nullable. It should be used if the variable is mutable and can be in its slide later, very important. And then, it should be used if we are sure that we will initialize it before using it. So that is what we have discussed before, right? So these four things are very important when we consider using the late init property. Always it will go with the where and it will go with the non-nullable variable, mutable and that can be initialized later. And finally, we have to make sure that we initialize it before using it, right? So this was all about the late init property. Now it's time to learn about the lazy property in Kotlin. Lazy in Kotlin. Lazy in Kotlin is useful in scenario where we want to create an object inside a class, but that object creation is expensive and that might lead to a delay in the creation of the object that is dependent on that expensive object. So for example, we have the session class here, right? So this is the class for which we can create the object. So here we can create the session object and when we create the session object, it will also create the mentor object internally. And due to some reason, suppose the mentor object is an expensive object. So session is the object that is dependent on the mentor object. 
सो इफ द मेंटोर ऑब्जेक्ट क्रिएशन टेक्स टाइम सो इट विल डिले द क्रिएशन ऑफ द सेशन ऑब्जेक्ट एज वेल सो दैट इज वेयर द लेजी की वर्ड कम्स इन टू द पिक्चर टू हेल्प अस सो नाउ वी विल सी द अपडेटेड कोड सो दिस इज आवर अपडेटेड कोड हियर वी हैव यूज द लेजी की वर्ड वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट एंड हियर वी हैव द वैल सो नाउ वॉट विल हैपन here we need to understand that the object mentor will only gets initialized whenever we accessed it for the first time otherwise it will not get initialized so it means that whenever we create the session object the session object will get created but the mentor object will not get created so it will not get initialized at all so it will lead to the fast creation of the session object because the mentor object will not get initialized unnecessarily during the object creation of the session very important so mentor object will not get initialized when we initialize the so basically when we create the session object so it will lead to the faster creation of the session object so that is how the lazy keyword helps us when we have the situation like this so now once again let's summarize everything about the lazy property it can be only used with the val keyword hence it is only read only property we want the variable to be initialized only if we need it for the first time very important the object will get only initialized whenever we are trying to access it for the first time otherwise the object will not get initialized at all and that is how it is helping us and we must understand that it creates the object only when we access it for the first time and then in the subsequent access it returns the same object so it means that if we create the object for the first time the session object the mentor will not get created at all because that is not needed so now when we access session dot mentor so at that time first time the mentor will get initialized this object will get created and now in the subsequent call so whenever we access it then again we, if we try to access session dot mentor so it will simply return the same object so that's the advantage with the lazy keyword so lazy means whenever we need it then only the object will get created otherwise it won't get created and also during the subsequent access it returns the same object very important right so that is all about the lazy property in kotlin so now i hope that you must have the clarity about the let in it property and the lazy property with respect to kotlin so now we know the answer to let in it versus lazy property in kotlin so that's it for now please like share comment and subscribe to my channel and if you want me to create more videos on a specific question let me know in the comment section i'll be happy to do it have a great learning ahead and i will see you in the next video